was once a dream is fast becoming a reality. The long-awaited metro rail is on track and headed for Los Angeles. When it arrives not long from now, metro rail will prove to be the vital link to providing a much needed balanced transportation system for the area. A total system that complements our comprehensive network of buses and freeways and one that will foster the growth, vitality, and economic development of this international metropolis, Los Angeles. Metro Rail. What is it, and what will it mean to all of us? Basically, Metro Rail is the first 18 miles of a 150-mile rail transit network approved by the voters of Los Angeles County in 1980. That is why it is sometimes referred to as the starter line. Metro Rail will be a modern conventional subway linking downtown Los Angeles and the San Fernando Valley via the bustling Wilshire Corridor and the communities of Fairfax and Hollywood. Here in this 75 square mile regional core concentrate many of the region's business, culture, and entertainment. And here converge most of its transit problems. Congestion, pollution, and noise. Fed by the nation's largest bus network, Metro Rail will carry nearly 300,000 passengers a day during its first year of operation in 1990. Conceived not as the total solution, but as a beginning, this backbone line will give rise to a series of extensions serving communities throughout the entire Los Angeles area. It is the starting point of a far-reaching transit network that will not only enhance mobility, but every aspect of our lives in the Los Angeles region. Subway travel has come a long way in the past 20 years. Today's vehicles are sleek, quiet, comfortable, and efficient. Controlled by a single operator, a six-car train can carry comfortably more than a thousand passengers, the equivalent of 14 operators driving 14 standard buses. Clearly, this is the most cost-efficient means of moving large volumes of people. Stations have changed, too. Metro rail stations will be modern, well-lit centers of activity, complementing the community character surrounding it. Contemporary art of various forms will embellish and enhance station designs. 17 station locations have been approved for immediate construction. An additional station has been approved for future construction at the Hollywood Bowl. Let's take a tour of the Metro Rail alignment and compare how some of the station intersections look today and how they could look at the turn of the decade when Metro Rail goes into operation. Starting at the southeastern end, we have Union Station. Just east of this location is the 40-acre site of the Central Maintenance Yard, where Metro Rail trains will be serviced and stored and where construction is scheduled to commence in mid-1984. Here are today and tomorrow views of this vital transportation center. The subway line will travel southwest through downtown with stations at the Civic Center at 1st and Hill Streets, Pershing Square at 5th and Hill Streets, and near Broadway Plaza at 7th and Flower Streets. Pershing Square will be the largest metro rail station, accommodating the highest ridership, some 44,000 passengers a day by the year 2000. The line will then turn west under Wilshire Boulevard, where the majority of the stations will be built. Stops will be made under Wilshire at Alvarado Street, Vermont Avenue, Normandy Avenue, Western Avenue, Crenshaw Boulevard, La Brea, and Fairfax Avenue. 
Here are some contrasting views of some of the Wilshire Station locations, starting with Vermont. Western. and La Brea. It should be noted that the Crenshaw facility will be a residential station. Similar to this metro station in Washington, D.C., it will be designed and zoned to preserve the existing low-density residential character of the adjacent community. The line will then turn north under Fairfax Avenue and stop at CBS Television City at Beverly Boulevard and at Santa Monica Boulevard in West Hollywood. The alignment then will jog east through Hollywood with a station at La Brea and Sunset Boulevard, at Hollywood and Coenga Boulevards, and eventually at the Hollywood Bowl. The subway line will proceed northwesterly under the Coenga Pass and the Santa Monica Mountains to its first San Fernando Valley station near Ventura and Lancashire Boulevards in Universal City. This site is across from the MCA Universal Studios complex and the new Getty Oil headquarters. The alignment will then proceed to its terminal station at Chandler and Lancashire Boulevards in North Hollywood. Clearly, these strategic locations will make the area centers of employment, culture, and recreation more accessible than ever before, which is the primary purpose of rapid transit. Some passengers will park and ride, bike and ride, or walk to metro rail stations. Paying fares and getting to and from the platforms will be simple while throughout the system, facilities such as elevators and escalators will provide direct access to the trains. At RTD, our fundamental design and engineering philosophy has been function and safety, first and foremost. To accomplish this, the entire metro rail system will be monitored at an operations control center where train movement and station areas will be continually supervised. Linked by a computer-based communications network, closed-circuit TV surveillance, and a full-time transit police force will ensure efficient operations and passenger safety. The need for Metro Rail as the starting point of rail transit in Los Angeles has been well established. Based on population density, traffic conditions, and development growth. With a population greater than 41 of the states, the Los Angeles urbanized area is the nation's second most densely populated area and is by far the largest urbanized area in North America and the Western world without a rail rapid transit system. Every day some 10 million people travel within this region by either bus or car and every day most of them face the agonizing routine of bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, overcrowded buses, breakdowns, and unhealthful pollution. Clearly, our overloaded freeway and bus system cannot keep pace with current mobility demands. And what of the future? Planning studies indicate that by the turn of the century, an additional population equal to that of the city of Houston we'll call this area home. Without a viable alternative to surface transportation, these additional commuters will just have to get in line on the highways and buses, thus doubling the travel times that many of us must endure today. By that time, some 30 million square feet of new commercial and office space will have been constructed, attracting over 100,000 additional employees to downtown Los Angeles alone. Such gridlock congestion generated by this additional influx of surface traffic has led transit planners to look for alternate solutions below the surface. And their findings? Independent studies unanimously conclude that rail transit is the missing link to a balanced transportation system for the entire county. 
And because the Los Angeles Regional Core is the hub of population density, business activity, and severe traffic congestion, it is the logical corridor to begin bridging the gap toward balance. And it all begins with the Metro Rail subway, as it will have a carrying capacity equal to that of 24 freeway lanes at just a third of the construction cost. Unimpeded by surface traffic congestion, accidents, and inclement weather, the underground trains will whisk passengers to their destinations in about half the time it now takes during rush hours. This will save them time, money, and their nerves. As the system expands to serve communities throughout the region, travel everywhere will become more rapid and more reliable. Buses now mired in the Wilshire Corridor will be freed for service to people all over the metropolitan area. Before it goes into operation, Metrorail will have passed through five phases of development. The planning or alternatives analysis phase was concluded in 1980. From that phase emerged the general 18-mile metro rail route and the public decision to build a high-capacity starter line on an exclusive right-of-way. The second phase, preliminary engineering, was completed in the summer of 1983. During this two-year period, route and station location decisions were made based on technical considerations and broad-based public input. As these and other critical decisions were made, initial design work began on metro rail stations, tunnels, and the actual vehicle. Concurrently, RTD conducted an in-depth and critical analysis of the system's environmental impacts to the area. Its findings, along with suggested measures to lessen adverse effects, have been certified and published in the Metro Rail Environmental Impact Statement. Metro Rail has now advanced to the third phase, final design, in which RTD engineers and a team of highly experienced transit consultants are refining their preliminary designs from the previous phase of work. As this refinement process nears completion, the construction phase will commence, followed by operational testing. Construction groundbreaking is scheduled for mid-1984. The system will be constructed using technology that has been proven effective in other major cities throughout the world. Between most stations, giant tunnel boring machines will operate entirely underground causing little or no disruption of surface, commerce, or traffic. Generally speaking, only at the stations and tunnel access areas will there be evidence of construction. Metro Rail's construction cost will total some $3.3 billion. It will be financed primarily by federal grants, while the local share will be met by state, county, and private sector resources. According to federal authorities, Metro Rail is the most justified and most thoroughly studied and most cost-effective new transit project in the nation. With the advent of Metro Rail, the Los Angeles community can look forward to unlimited benefits. Aside from the obvious advantages of fast, safe, and reliable travel, Metro Rail will stimulate economic growth and create employment in every community it serves. Here, as in other places, the underground flow of travelers will generate commercial concourses and shopping malls developed jointly with Metro Rail. These joint development ventures, along with the creation of benefit assessment districts around station areas, will encourage private sector participation in the financing of Metro Rail. Total private sector investment is expected to be two and a half times the system's construction cost. That equals about seven billion dollars of value to the region. A substantial investment that likely would not be realized without Metro Rail. Metro Rail construction will also generate a wealth of job opportunities to the area. 
some 25 to 30,000 worker years of employment and a billion dollars in wages for Southern Californians. As RTD turns the pages to a new chapter in transit history, it stands prepared to face the complex challenges of becoming a multimodal agency. As the state-designated provider of public transit for the region, RTD will operate both bus and rail services, thus integrating both components into one efficient system. Already, RTD has the highest bus ridership in North America, with a record patronage of some one and a half million boardings each weekday. This dramatically demonstrates that public transit demand continues to grow rapidly, not only in Los Angeles, but within the five Southern California counties RTD serves. With exceptional leadership and some 8,000 dedicated employees in its ranks, RTD is working with the public and private sectors to ensure a smooth transition into its multimodal role. When this new era in transit begins with Metrorail, local citizens will have their first real travel alternative to the automobile. Among other things, they will enjoy a better lifestyle, cleaner air, and abundant economic rewards. What is Metrorail? Simply put, it is history in the making. Metrorail is the new birth experience for transit in Los Angeles, which will blossom and enhance our quality of life for decades to come. Yes, Metrorail is coming.